Hello students. I hope you all are doing well and are in good health. We're going to begin with the next chapter, which is surface area and volumes. Now you all have been making figures like a square, rectangle, triangle, circle, etc. in your notebooks on a regular basis till now. Now all those figures are called two dimensional figures or plane figures. In this chapter, we are going to be looking at solid figures like a cuboid, cube, cylinder, cone, sphere, and hemisphere. They are called three dimensional figures and you would be amazed to see how these shapes are all around us. For example, you may have come across a Rubik's cube, a Coke can, a birthday cap, a football, a serving bowl, and many more in your regular activities. Before I introduce these solid figures, I'm going to just emphasize the importance of units in calculation. We are going to be working out the area and the volume throughout the chapter. And these are some very basic conversions of area and volume. Why this is so important is because in every question of this chapter, it is important and mandatory to make the units uniform. Now, from your previous knowledge, you may recall the nets of a cube and a cuboid. So this particular video is just going to take you back to the nets of a cube and a cuboid, and it's going to enhance your clarity about these solids. Do watch the video uh, along with the rest of the contents. Now I'm going to start with my first subtopic in the chapter, which is surface area of a cuboid and cube. Now here you can see both the solid figures. You can see a cuboid. And in the cuboid, you can see a length, a breadth, and a height. In a cuboid, all the faces are rectangular. And as you can observe over here, there are six rectangular faces and all the opposite faces are parallel to each other. For example, the top and the bottom face, the front and the one that is behind, and the two side faces. Similarly, in a cube, the length, breadth, and height will be equal to each other. Here it's being called A. That means all the faces of a cube are square in shape. So what is the total surface area of a cuboid? If you add all the six surfaces that you can see over here, it's going to be twice length into breadth, plus breadth into height, plus height into length. Then we also have the area of the four walls, which we call the lateral area of a cuboid, which is given by twice length plus breadth into height. Similarly, the total surface area of a cube is going to be 6a square. Every face is a square and the area of every face is a square. Since there are six faces, all of them added together are going to lead to 6a square. And the lateral surface area of a cube is going to be 4a square. So click on this link and understand the formulas better. Now these are some real life examples of a cube and a cuboid. So you can see a Rubik's cube here. You can see sugar cubes. You can see a gift box. You can see a book and an aquarium. So these are examples of a cuboid and a cube which you may come across in your daily life. 
Next, I'm going to move to the first exercise of the chapter, which is 13.1, and I'm going to begin with question number one. A plastic box 1.5 meters long, 1.25 meters wide, and 65 centimeters deep is to be made. It is opened at the top. Ignoring the thickness of the plastic sheet, determine the area of the sheet required for making the box and the cost of the sheet for it if a sheet measuring one meter square costs rupees 20. Now there are two important observations in this question. The first one is that two of the units are given in meters, the third unit is given in centimeters. So once you start the calculation of the solution, you must ensure that the units are uniform throughout the question. Second point to remember here is, it says it is opened at the top, that means the top surface does not exist. So effectively, there are only five surfaces to be considered in this box. So I'm taking L to be 1.5, B to be 1.25 meters, as is given in the question, and I'm taking the height to be, which is given to be 65 centimeters, I'm converting to 0.65 meters. So what is the reason behind converting the units into meters? The reason is that the cost is given per meter square. And if we are able to work out the area in meter square, it's going to be very easy to multiply and work out the cost. So what is the area of the sheet required? That's going to be the lateral surface area plus the area of the base. The top uh, surface is not included. So lateral surface area, as we've seen in the previous slide, is twice L plus B into H plus L into B, which is the area of the base. The next few steps that you see over here are putting up the values and the calculation part. You need to be very careful with multiplication and addition over here, especially uh, because the working is involving decimals. So you get the area of the sheet as 5.45 meters square. So the cost of the sheet, which is given per meter square, you will multiply the area obtained with 20, and you get the cost as 109. Then I'm taking the third question. The floor of a rectangular hall has a perimeter 250 meters. If the cost of painting the four walls at the rate of rupees 10 per meter square is rupees 15,000, find the height of the wall. So you are given the perimeter of the floor as 250 meters. The formula for the perimeter in a rectangle is twice L plus B, which is going to be equal to 250. The area of the four walls will be calculated as cost upon the rate. The cost is given as 15,000, the rate is 10, and we get the area of the four walls. But what is the formula of the area? That's twice L plus B into H, already seen, and that's going to be equal to 1,500 but twice L plus B is given to be 250. Substitute the value here. Into H is 1500, which is giving H equal to six. Now, since in the entire working, we haven't uh, assumed what H is going to be signified as, we uh, should be giving a statement conclusion over here. So the height of the hall is six meters. Next, I'm taking up the fourth question. The paint in a certain container is sufficient to paint an area equal to 9.375 meters square. How many bricks of dimensions 22.5 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 7.5 centimeters can be painted out of this container? Now, again, what you notice over here is a difference of units. The area is given in meter square, but the dimensions of the brick are given in centimeters. 
So you will have to make the units uniform again. Number of bricks that can be uh, painted is going to be the area of the paint available divided by the total surface area of one brick. So you are given the area as 9.375 in the question, and I'm going to convert the units into centimeters. So I'm going to multiply uh, the uh, numerator with 10,000. That's because one meter square is equal to 10,000 centimeters square. The denominator is the total surface area of one brick. So I'm going, to, I'm applying the formula for TSA of a cuboid over here. Next, after you are going through the calculations, you realize the digits in the <clears throat> numerator and denominator look somewhat close. So how do we remove that decimal over here? Multiply the numerator and denominator with 10 each. So your numerator is going to be 937500 and the denominator is going to be 9375, which is now an easy calculation and you get the number of bricks equal to 100. This is the hint for the, 12, uh, for the sixth question. So when you do the try the sixth question yourself, you can take the help of the hint. Then I'm moving on to the seventh question of the exercise, which is a good question. Shanti sweet stall was placing an order for making cardboard boxes for packing their sweets. Two sizes of boxes were required. The bigger of dimensions 25 centimeters by 20 centimeters by 5 centimeters and the smaller of dimensions 15 centimeters by 12 centimeters by 5 centimeters. For all the overlaps, 5% of the total surface area is required extra. If the cost of the cardboard is rupees 4 per, for 1000 centimeters square, find the cost of cardboard required for supplying 250 boxes of each kind. So I begin the uh, solution with taking the big box first and I'm working out the total surface area of the big box by using the formula that comes out to be 1450 centimeters square but you also have to include the area for overlaps which is going to be 5% of 1450 which is 72.5 centimeters square and from the two values you can work out the total area of the big box which is 1522.5 centimeters square now for working out the small box you are going to go through the same steps. So you first work out the total surface area of the small box. Then you work out the area for overlaps and you add the two, which comes out to be 661.5 centimeters square. Now the total number of boxes required in the question are 500. And if I take one big box and one small box into a bracket, which is going to be two boxes now, then the number of boxes, the bracket is going to be multiplied with 250 to complete the figure of 500. What is the value of this bracket now? Area of one big box plus area of one small box. Add the two, which is giving you 2184 centimeters square. So you are going to multiply this area with 250 C. You've already written over here that the combined area is going to be multiplied with 250 to arrive at the cost of 500 boxes. So the cost of 250 boxes of each kind is going to be rupees 250 into the area 2184 into the cost given in the question, which is rupees 4 for 1000 centimeters square. So the cost becomes 4 upon 1000. Now 250 into four is thousand, which gets canceled with the thousand in the denominator and you get the cost as 2184. Now questions two, five, six, and eight in this exercise, you will try yourself, try and come back with your doubts. Next, in the end, I'm going to be leaving you all with a challenge question based on cuboid and cube.
The question is, cut a small cube with edge length two centimeters inside of a 10 centimeter by eight centimeter by five centimeter box. What is the surface area of the remaining object? Give a good look to the figure and you need to work out the answer in the box here. Thank you all. And I'm going to return with the next video soon.